Hey guys, welcome back. So today I would like to take a look at this thing over here. This is one of the famous H5AD Plus hot air rework stations. I got this for Christmas and today I would like to take a look at it. I already know a few things about it and we will see how it performs. In the future I might upgrade a few minor things because I know some manufacturers they tend to have a few minor problems because this thing is rebranded so many times and it seems like each brand has a specific problem itself. So this thing came with three different nozzles, a small round one, a bigger round one and a square one. The station itself and an instruction manual which has a bit of information in it but is not really useful. Now the station itself has the handle. We have uh, openings on one side not the other for air. We have a blower style air uh, fan which moves air in here. We have the heating element sitting in here and then the hot air comes out over here. We can uh, use any of these tips over here. Not tips like I already forgot how they are called. However we can use them to get the preferred uh, diameter, preferred working area. It lies rather nice in my hand. It's not too big, it's not too uh, heavy. It could be a bit smaller. Uh, that's not a big deal. So I already know that there is a Hall effect sensor in the handle itself. So the nice thing is if you're not using it and you get it into the handle, it will power off and cool the heating element. We have power on off switch here. We can adjust the air movement. We have eight steps and with these we can adjust the temperature. The cable over here that goes into the handle, this is a bit stiff but not really. It, it is flexible not, but not as flexible as I would like it but that's okay. And the mains cable itself is rather thick. Now this could also be just a lot of insulation and more like oh I'm a good cable but actually I'm just uh, insulation. I don't know about that. I will definitely take a look inside in the future but for this video I'm not going to open it because I bought it from a vendor within my country and my country provides um, some special warranty by law and if I open it this warranty is voided so I am not going to do that right now. I will do that in the future because there are a few minor things for example, the handle, um, if we take a look, so one side is not open, this is completely closed, this is just for looks. This side over here, you can't really look inside, and that is there are two different uh, designs, but these designs that prevent you from looking inside also prevent anything from falling inside, could rather restrict the airflow of the blower and I might open it up and remove these uh, protective things so the blower is a bit stronger. But that's the thing for the future. Right now, let's power it on and take a look. Okay, so it's powered on. Can adjust the air movement. And if I remove the handle, it starts to power on. It's currently set to 300 degrees Celsius. We can do minor adjustments or hold down to rise the temperature faster. It goes all the way up to 450 degrees Celsius. No, oh, it goes further up. I don't know. Okay. Should go up to 450. The manual says 450 and it goes all the way down to 100 degrees Celsius. The manual says 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah, 100 is the lowest. Now let's rise the temperature to let's say 350. Okay, 350 degrees Celsius and if I now get the handle inside the temperature will fall, the blower still blows so it will cool down and it goes into a standby temperature and if I remove the handle it again will rise back up. Now, let's see how accurate that temperature reading is. Alright, now you have a top view and 
something really interesting just happened. It completely turned off the blower and is now in like a sleep mode. I didn't know it do, does that, which is nice. So let's see if it reactivates. Um, yes, it does. Now here's the temperature thermometer. Let's get the thermocouple in front and see how hot it actually is. It's still set to 350 and I should not block the blower and I'm directly in front. Okay, that's a bit high. Now let's see. Okay, so essentially if I go really close obviously it gets hotter. 370, but if I go a bit further away into a operating distance like over here yeah it's inconsistent let's see um let me install one of these nozzles i was just measuring directly on the output but that's obvious it has to be rather hot these nozzles add a bit of distance so it needs to be hotter when it comes directly out. The question is how hot is it when it comes out of here? Let's see the temperature directly on the end. Well, it says 350. And I shall get the thermometer in here and directly on the outlet, on the output, I will measure the temperature. It is still set to 350, but it doesn't get there. Oh, that's... that's far off. Now it's at 350 almost. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was blocking... oh yeah, I think I was blocking the blower. So now... Yeah, yeah, that's approximately one millimeter away from the end and we are almost at 350. I think it works. I think it's precise. You always have to keep in mind that you have a working distance. You can't really measure directly in there nor too far away because uh, it really comes down to the working distance it's uh, trimmed for. Now it's already cooling down. Now let's turn it off. It was at 160 degrees Celsius and that should be fine. It's not too high. It's safe to turn off, I think. The handle itself, it gets warm over here. Beside that, the case itself is totally fine. Oh, I just remembered one thing. Some of these rework stations have the problem that this part over here this uh, metal uh, shell is not connected to protective earth and that's a big problem because what they do inside of here they have essentially a, a triac and the heating element is directly driven from mains voltage the triac, the triac regulates the voltage and therefore the heating but if the heating element would burn through and the ends would separate and one of the ends touches the metal, the outer metal, this could eventually get to life potential and that's potentially deadly. I have to make sure that it's actually connected to protective earth. So we'll use one lead that goes directly into an outlet to the protective earth prong and this I will just touch over here and it says we have yeah we it's grounded that's fine another thing that uh, is also sometimes a problem this part over here is metal the front plate is plastic this is most of the time not grounded so let's see these screws go directly into the enclosure but it's grounded that's nice so this means that most of the problems that other units do have, and that is proper connection to protective earth, is not a problem here. Which means the only thing that I might do in the future 
is the heating element, removing these plastic parts so the blower can blow uh, more air. And another nice thing, which I just saw, I think this is a fuse. Most other units, they don't have a fuse holder, they don't have a fuse. But this thing has, so let's remove the plug and open it up. Yes, we do have a fuse. It's a glass blow fuse, but that's not a problem. Let's see, it's a 250 volt. It's an F6A, which means it's a fast blowing 6 amp fuse. That's nice. What I got here is not, not one of these cheap bad units, but a cheap, really well manufactured one. That's so... I'm baffled. I was expecting a unit that is just as shitty as all the other ones I saw. But it's properly ground grounded, it has a fuse installed. I don't think I ever have to open up this thing, except for the handle. And one last test before I will uh, solder a bit with it. That is a fast start test. I want to see how fast it actually heats up. And for that, I again need my thermometer and I have to take time. Setting is still at uh, 350 degrees Celsius. Yes, it is warm, but it completely turned off. The heating element is turned off, the blower is turned off. And let's see how long it takes to reach 350 degrees Celsius. And that's it. So it's not perfect 350, it's 340 and it's regulating, but that's expected. I mean, that's not a big deal. It's, let's say it's a 10 degree Celsius difference. The working distance obviously matters, so you need a higher temperature if you're further away. But I don't mind that, and this is a problem with all of these. Yes, there are better ones, ones that are a bit more tested and and everything but I'm fine with that. As a test for the unit I decided to remove all of these SMD components from the broken boost converters over here and I will then repopulate one of them. This will be the benchmark for the performance of the hot air rework station. I will just use a normal solder get the pads all covered with fresh solder, apply the components and use the heat gun to then also reapply them. But first I have to remove them. Okay, I removed all the solder that I was able to remove and the pads almost look like new and now what I'm going to do is reapply a bit of solder to each pad and then reflow the components. Okay, now I will set the components on top and try to reflow the solder and hopefully the components won't move. Guess what? I will reflow all the components one by one. And I also need a bit of flux to make sure that the solder surface tension is not too high. So let's apply a bit of flux. Now let's inspect the solder joints. So let's see. This looks really good. 
this joint looks good. These look fine, this look fine, these two do not look very good, but there is solder, I need a bit more solder on those two pads, but not a big deal. This one looks fine, this looks fine, oops, and this joint over here looks also fine, and the diode over here also looks totally fine. The only uh, resistor that I did not remove or the only component is this really tiny component over here because I do not have a microscope. I only have my smartphone but even to get it this uh, big I have to zoom in, uh, I have to get really close. There's not a whole lot of distance. And that was also my struggle when I reapplied all of these components because my smartphone was so close to my working area and I even used the magnifying glass of my helping hand to get closer so I don't have to get that far in with my smartphone. Still it's uh, too much. But that's how it looks and uh, beside these two joints over here yeah that's a really good performance and it was really quick. So far I'm really pleased with the result. It works totally fine. It has more features, more safety features than I expected. I thought it would be one of these um, really bad uh, soldering stations, but this thing actually is grounded. It has a fuse. The case is even grounded. All of these things that you typically do not get. And by performance it was really quick desoldering all the components and it was really quick resoldering all the components. The joints look really good and I'm really happy to finally have one of these. And I would highly recommend you also get one if you are interested into SMD work. Because yes, it's doable with the soldering iron, but is it a fun thing? No, it's not. It's a really tedious thing using a soldering iron to work with SMD components. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!